Glastonbury. We're staying in a little shed. I have fantasies that tomorrow morning for my birthday I'll have my tea outside. I hope it's nice and sunny tomorrow. So cosy, so sweet. I think that's what birthdays are, in my opinion, for my life. Every time my birthday comes round, I've been round the sun one whole time, which is amazing in itself, because that's what it takes a year to, for the earth to go round the sun and I'm back again. Once a year. And I like to list the things that I'm grateful for and remember those things that are important. Family and relationships and creativity and and her <laughs> because I've been thinking yes this is my birthday hair this year but then when Stephen said would you like a wig for your birthday I had to say yes I would and I think at the moment it's likely to be Dolce by Noriko so that would mean four <laughs> Noriko wigs <laughs> which is quite amazing. Initially today I had this clipped up when I was when we first went into bath it was really nice but then at lunch I just it it just looks great with the minimum of effort it really does and nobody looked at me like I was wearing a wig nobody did and it's such a great solution if you've got hair loss. I don't want to be walking around bath going to to this amazing bookshop that I've wanted to go to for years, going to lunch with my husband, coming to this magical little spot in order to think about my life. I don't want to do those things with no hair. I want to do those things looking good, feeling good. It's savouring, savouring every moment of life. I was going to wear a nice birthday dress today, it being my birthday, but it's not really warm enough for a dress, so I'm back in my trousers. And you must excuse me, I'm actually having my breakfast. It's a special birthday breakfast. Steve has gone to have his breakfast, and I've come here to have my breakfast. And then, it being my birthday, the rest of the day is free, and I know exactly what I'm going to do. I've got a very clear idea as to why I came to this town and what I want to get out of it. I never tire or get blasé about getting up in the morning and choosing how I want to look. And truly, I'm totally not exaggerating. When I was walking down the high street meeting people, saying hi as people do when they pass each other, especially in this town. I felt great. Steve has offered to buy me another Noriko style. And I did ask on Instagram and YouTube, do you think I should go for Dolce? Dolce is a very full style, it's fluffy. And it kind of comes down to the um, jaw, but it's it, it's quite short at the back. I never realised that I would really enjoy um, shorter styles. I always thought that longer styles suited me best. It's amazing really how I get older and my face changes and my needs change as well. How all of these new styles start to work their way into your collection, you know, it's... It's a funny thing, it really reflects, you know, the, the ageing process. It's fascinating and, and I'm really enjoying going through that. I'm 55 today and I was reflecting quite in depth about how there have been some really special events that I've, that I've gone through that have, have meant a lot to me. Things like meeting my baby granddaughter for the first time or going out on a really special romantic date. Coming here, for example, on my 55th birthday. Also, the very first time I bought a wig. 
if you're new to this channel and I know that there are some new subscribers my very first wig was a petrifying experience it was Mila by John Renaud I'll never forget receiving that piece how petrifying it was um, I took it I, I almost sort of ferreted it upstairs thank goodness nobody else was home and I sat in front of my mirror put my hair up and I thought okay let me remember try and remember how how you actually put this thing on I put her on you know Mila's got a, a full monofilament top and a lace front so I went straight into the deep end I specifically chose a color 8RH14 that 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 matched my natural hair color so I wasn't having to um, have a shock and take on a new color and I put her on and I had hair again it was a real salient moment in my life because I haven't looked back since that day I never looked back I fell in love with Mila I fell in love with that image of of me restored to having hair again because I'd been very stressed and tense about losing my hair and then I had the very real um, challenge, conundrum, of how was I then going to start wearing this beautiful new hair in my life? And there was a huge hurdle to overcome in that respect because um, I had to introduce the idea to Steve and my, and my children. and. I knew that in due course my friends also but there's no way that I was even thinking that far ahead my first my first step was Steve I will never forget coming downstairs he was downstairs I had her on walking through the door I remember opening the door he was sitting in the chair he looked up at me with this kind of neutral expression on his face I couldn't even read his expression and it was making me feel anxious I was so timid I I was so timid I had to fight the urge to, to take it off my head and I walked towards him and he was very neutral kind of upbeat in a way that I didn't understand and um smiling he was smiling but I didn't really know whether it was an embarrassed smile or whether it was a genuine smile. And I sat next to him and I filmed it. You know, this is this is actually what happened. Um, he took it really well. He said that <clears throat> it just looked like... <clears throat> I'd been to the hairdresser and had my hair dyed and styled. Now remember, in those days, I actually had more hair than I do now. And over the course of the last few years on my YouTube channel, but especially since 2020, I have shown, I have tried to be very transparent to show you the progression of my hair loss, which without wigs would have been really devastating. I mean, how on earth would I, would I live? without them I and and it's not because of the baldness as such because there are women out there who are completely hairless and they go out hairless you know or if they're receiving treatment for a, an illness they go out hairless and that's fine this was different for me it felt like my hair was falling out but I still had some left that the the the, the, the areas it was falling out was particularly unflattering it was kind of around the front at the top you know and then and then it spread to slightly towards the crown as well so that the whole of the top area and then here on both sides at the back until it just became a it just looked like rat's tails hanging down it was just horrible and there's no way there's no way that I could find any happiness really mixing with people looking like that I I just 
I just couldn't. I mean, I used to put my makeup on and it was pointless. H however, my my main um, focus for, for, for telling you this is developing those relationships with the pieces that I had. It was something unexpected. I, I just... I just I just looked at each step as it came up I didn't look medium to long term or anticipate how things would be for me absolutely not but over time a rich relationship developed between me and my pieces I remembered Mila forever talking about Mila on my channel I still wear Mila I bought Mila in 20 either 2018 or 2019 and she's still going strong. The fibers are great. When I wash and condition her, she looks soft and fine. And the lace front is fine. And I still wear her. Uh, Radiant Beauty. I met my granddaughter wearing Radiant Beauty. I'll never forget that. Today, Seville. I turned 55 in Glastonbury today. In my favorite place, Somerset doing all my favorite things even eating my favorite things Seville will forever have a, a, a place in my in my heart and mind a, a special piece with special meaning and that adds richness and enjoyment to your experience with with your hair you know uh my wig closet i've shown my wig closet on on the channel before that that is my happy place now i sit on my stool at my dressing table I have a south facing window it's a big window and I sit there my wig closet is to my left and every morning I go through this joyful ritual with gratitude every morning what am I gonna wear today okay what clothes what hair will match the clothes do I want to go dark do I want a bit of red do I want some blonde do I want rooted it's um changed my life now that term changed my life is so overused <laughs> it's it's almost lost its meaning but the the life-changing power of wigs when you need them or want them is not to be underestimated and I always come back this takes me right back to the top if you are a woman who is suffering with hair loss and it's making you sad see if you can work with your mind to overcome those aspects that you're not happy with does the prospect of wearing hair feel more overwhelming than the prospect of carrying on as you are and managing whatever sadness or grief or loss you're feeling about your hair loss only you can 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 weigh the balance only you know whether you feel confident enough to make that step buy your first piece be it a topper or a half wig or a or a fringe piece and only you know what those people in your life how they are likely to react to you are they react likely to be supportive are they likely to be hostile are they likely to belittle you and for a long time with hair for many years when you're wearing hair you've decided to wear it and maybe you're wearing it on a daily basis. I mean, this channel is about daily hair wearing, you know. <laughs> That's what it's become, you know. Are you strong enough to just go ahead and wear that hair and and turn turn the conversation to something positive and useful and empowering to you? Mind today on my 55th birthday, grabbing life, squeezing what I want out of the day, 
looking how I want to look, feeling like I'm open to people and conversation. And my goodness, people react to me so much more positively when I have a good head of hair on my head. And they do, and they do. And some of you have, have messaged back when I've said that before and said, yes, we've experienced the same thing. People are more open, they're more friendly, they're more ready to smile and say hello. I'm going to grab it, I'm going to grab it today. I'm 55. I'm in the throes of middle age, well and truly. So here I am back home. Somebody asked me the other day, it was a comment under one of the videos, what tanning lotion do I use? I actually use a makeup. It's called Vita Liberata body blur and the color that I have is latte and you know a little bit goes a long way with this I wanted to demonstrate just how little you need I've got my mirror down here and you know um, if you are gonna go for a short style like I said before Um, it's really nice to have a little bit of colour on you and you basically buff, buff this stuff in and the more you buff, the, the more of the um, extra that you take off which leaves you with something that's not going to transfer onto your, onto your clothing which is actually quite nice. We're not really in summer yet, so I don't feel a tremendous urge to go for a very dark color. This is beautifully buildable. If I was putting this on for real, um, you know, ready to go out in a strapless dress or an off the shoulder dress, I'd definitely get a bit of help putting it on my back. But just to demonstrate, you can see the glow that it gives. It's very subtle. This is a little off the shoulder number. It can be pulled down more if necessary. Whatever it is that's gonna make you comfortable. I love it because it's got long sleeves. It's basically just a tube dress. It's a jersey dress. I was looking um, in the mirror whilst uh, putting my hair up I haven't put any foundation on <laughs> the bronzer and I know it's very subtle it really is subtle but it's buildable um, that that color latte is amazing with bronzer you can actually build up your color well I've chosen quite neutral colors for my eyes I had also mentioned a bronzing powder you can see this color is bronze. That's what this color is called. I think this is just a cheap and cheerful thing I picked up um, in a local shop. It doesn't have a big name or anything. Along the collarbone. And for all those new subscribers, I wanted to introduce you in person to the lady herself, <laughs> Mila by John Renault. Such a favorite. The color here is 8RH14 Hot Cocoa. It does have subtle highlighting of the number 14 interspersed throughout it here and there. You can see briefly full monofilament cap, extended nape, lovely soft ear tabs. I just want to brush out those beach waves. I'm never really afraid of brushing out curls and waves in a synthetic piece. A little bit of water will restore the shape really quite well. This color is called Pink Hint and it goes beautifully with this sort of lip liner, which is, this is not 
full of perma teas really. It's got some, but not too much. It's extremely natural. So this is how Mila is bearing up after all these years. I think I bought this one in early 2019, probably around my birthday then. I tend to, to make changes around my birthday. Oh, I've worn her so much. I've loved her so much. She's got a special place in my heart. The lace front is still doing well. The beach waves are pretty good. And what I love to do with Mila, because of that monofilament top, I like to change her up. When I change up the part in Mila and make her go the other side, she gets quite, quite a natural sort of lift. There at the root. And it's really nice to be able to to treat the wig and the fibres like they really were your own hair and change them up, pin them up, put her up. She's got lovely movement. I've got so many more pieces now. I don't really wear Mila that much. <laughs> but um, the fact that she is very close to my what used to be my natural hair colour, of course <laughs> it is now grey, but I do dye it a medium brown usually. The joy that she's given me over the years. I never imagined that I'd have so much joy and fun, so many options open to me, so much built-in beauty into the, into the design of the wigs themselves. There is a beauty in the actual colour and the highlights themselves that you can adorn yourself with and very easily get an amazing result. Now, do you remember in the last video, I said that an off the shoulder dress like this would go so beautifully with Reese. Let's try it on and see what we think. You'll see that my back is actually paler. <laughs> but look at this. The way Reese kind of creeps down the back of your neck. I always imagined that I would always wear my hair tucked behind my ears when I had Reese on. I feel that I could wear her like this. Trying on these new styles has <laughs> opened up doors that I would never, never have, have had the opportunity to find out about myself and what I like and what suits me and what I'm comfortable with. How many, how many women have got the opportunity for that? You know, generally speaking, women get a hairstyle in their early 20s and kind of stick with her. I was so curious to see what Reese would look like in this sort of dress. And now I know. I was very lucky because Stephen offered to buy me um, another Noriko wig and I, after a lot of YouTubing, I decided to settle for Dolce and I just could not decide what colour to have. <laughs> I can't buy multiple colours here so I'm going to have to be relatively sensible, go for a relatively safe colour um, that I know will probably suit me and I decided to order a Mochaccino R and it was only later that I realised that I had a Rene of Paris Mochaccino LR in another style. But you know, I recently learned that Rene of Paris and Noriko are under the same parent company. So I thought that the colours would probably be the same. The only difference is that this one is an LR whereas the other one is just a plain R. And the one I've got is Kai by René of Paris. But some pretty cute highlights. And definitely another contender 
for a dress with a neckline like this. <laughs> Look. I mean, how classic. You know, classic is simple lines. There's nothing to go out of fashion or to fall out of a trend with a combination like this when you've got quite, well, mid-neck, I think, hair. Of course, if you've got a shorter neck or a longer face, it's likely to, to come a little bit different on you, but basically, it's above the shoulder. But it was so useful to find this in my cupboard <laughs> because now I can see exactly what colour I'm going to get. The only thing is the rooting won't be a long root like this one. I'm really looking forward to Dolce. I've no idea how it's going to be on me, whether, whether she's going to suit me or not. Um, <laughs> I really... I really don't know. Now, whereas Kai has got pretty good lace front, pretty realistic looking. I'm just going to put her on my head and go. I'm so excited about getting her. So excited. I just can't wait. And then if I really like her and I find that she's a very wearable style, that is very versatile, that I can wear to work as well as out socializing, a style that goes with a lot of my clothes. There have been some very useful reviews for Dolce and I've made the most of those but ultimately when we hit that add to cart button we are all taking a gamble um, especially when we're coming to choose something completely new. I've never had my hair like that, I've never seen myself with hair like that I'll just keep you updated and let you know how it goes. Mm, and now I'm back home, the magic and the beauty and the freedom of Somerset is just a memory now and I'm back to work tomorrow. But I must pack up and wrap up now because I'm on babysitting duty. <laughs> because there's no way I'm going babysitting with this off the shoulder number, not with this weather anyway. It's been really lovely to be able to catch up with you again and I just can't wait to do that Dolce review.